Hey everyone, so this video is going to be my review of Wolong Fallen Dynasty. I know this is coming a little bit late and any notions of a review have probably already gone way past their sell-by date since this game's been out for over a week. But still, I wanted to give my thoughts on this game because this is the first big Souls-like release of 2023. And to be honest with you, I've been pretty absorbed in this game since its release and I've been playing a lot of it. So this video is going to be my first impressions slash review of the game. This is coming after several hours of gameplay on two separate characters, just because I wanted to mess around with different weapons. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, before we get started, if you do enjoy this content, as always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all the usual. It really helps out. And yeah, as a note, if you're worried about spoilers, because you haven't played Volong yet, don't worry because this review will only contain footage of really the first three major levels so there's going to be nothing spoilery in terms of the contents this is going to be footage from very early on in the game if you want an overall tldr for my thoughts on this game uh, my opinions are that while this is the team ninja souls like game i've enjoyed most out of the three of neo neo 2 and wolong I still cannot shake the feeling that there are some sort of fundamental game design aspects in this series that I simply just do not like. Luckily, if you do enjoy these design aspects or you simply don't mind them, Wolong is easily the best out of the three games and it really feels like the first time the series has managed to establish its own identity instead of being just ninja souls with lots of loot. The main thing that leads to this and the part of the game that I enjoy the most and I think is easily Wolong's strongest point is the combat system. Honestly, currently the combat system is the thing that is keeping me playing. Wolong without a doubt has a unique and in my honest opinion pretty fantastic combat system. I think people who say this is a Sekiro clone are selling it a little bit short. Sure, there are a lot of strong elements of Sekiro here and certainly if you love Sekiro's combat system like I do, you're probably going to enjoy Wolong's combat. I mean everything is here, the deflection, a posture meter equivalent, the fact that damage comes mainly from critical attacks, um, critical attacks on enemies, sneaking, jump attacks, etc. The lack of a stamina bar, it's basically all there. However, I do think there is a little bit more to Wolong's combat and while I love Sekiro because it is a little bit more complex in some aspects, Wolong is a little bit different and complex in other areas. The first thing to mention about the combat system is deflects do not work like they do in Sekiro. In Wolong, a successful deflect leads to the enemy getting essentially mini parried slash mini stunned. Instead of, you know, you being able to continually uh, sort of press the deflect button and continue deflecting even during a combo like you can in Sekiro. And this mini parry doesn't actually lead to a stance break. Instead, it affects Wolong's version of the posture meter in Sekiro. But instead of having just a meter that eventually breaks, opening the enemy up for a critical, here you have a meter that flows in two directions. Certain actions like blocking, using your magic, or getting hit swings the meter to the left. This applies both to you and the enemies, and eventually leads to a stance break. Things like successful deflect, attacking the enemy, and avoiding damage swings the meter to the right, allowing you to use special martial arts abilities and also to deal additional posture damage, but also for the enemies to use their special attacks as well. Now, what I love about this combat system and Wolong as a whole is that every single enemy obeys the same rules you do. At least every single enemy I've fought up to this point. I don't know if there is an outlier. The rules of the game are extremely clear and the combat system itself is incredibly intuitive once you understand it. In a way, you can almost think of this as Sekiro 2.0 combat wise. Like I said, while I think Sekiro does some things better, like the critical system or perilous attack system, I think this flowing mechanic is a really interesting innovation. 
and I think it brings even more depth and ebb and flow to the fast Ninja Souls subgenre, which is now, well, a subgenre with two entries. I also love that Team Ninja decided to abandon some of the Souls-like genre staples that they were sticking to in Neo 1 and 2. Unfortunately, some annoying aspects of it are still there. For example, at this point, I think that having equipment weight limits is completely pointless. Like, just let me wear whatever I want like you can in Bloodborne. It's completely pointless having to also manage your um, overburden percentage instead of just, yeah, again, letting you wear whatever you want. But you know, overall, if you're familiar with the studio, you know what type of games they excel at. The super fast hack and slash action games a la Ninja Gaiden. And I think by abandoning some of the Souls staples, Wolong actually feels much closer to a Ninja Gaiden than it does to actual Souls. And honestly, I think it plays much more to the strength of Team Ninja. I always felt like Neo games stuck a little bit too close to the Souls formula, and it's good to be liberated from that in Wolong while still keeping some of the genre staples. Don't get me wrong, this is a Souls game, but it's an outlier, just like how Sekiro was a little bit of an outlier. Honestly, this leads to Wolong, in my honest opinion, being much easier than the Neo games. I always found the Neo games, especially Neo 2, incredibly difficult, and honestly, I've had some challenging encounters in Wolong as well, but overall the game has been a lot easier. Now, of course, just like with Sekiro, you kind of have to rewire your brain from like playing Elden Ring or any of the other actual Souls games. But just like with Sekiro, once you have done that and once you understand what this game is trying to do with the combat, things are going to become way easier. For me, for example, once I understood that this game has to be approached much more like a hack and slash game, the combat immediately became way smoother and also much easier. There's also a lot of positives to say about the presentation itself. I actually really, really have to praise the character creator. This is one of the best character creators I've seen in a long time. And it's honestly something you can lose hours of time in if you really want to. And I do have to mention, I did play this game on PS5 and I heard about the, well, simply egregious issues that the PC port of this game has or had. The PS5 version doesn't have such issues and it actually runs at a pretty stable frame rate and it's actually very smooth and I haven't had any technical issues overall with the game. And honestly, it's good for Wolong that the combat system is so great because it literally is the main thing that is keeping me playing, like I said at the beginning. I'm not gonna mince words, I think outside of combat I have a lot of issues with this game. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I'm fully conscious that most of these issues might be subjective and come down to personal tastes. Some people really enjoy the aspects of the Neo and now Wolong games that I do not personally enjoy. But still, I want to talk about them so that you know what you're getting into when you pick this game up. Firstly, maybe this is minor, but the story in my view has some major presentation issues. Both Neo 1 and 2 felt like you were jumping from random cutscene to random cutscene and just meeting important characters by the dozen without any context on who they are and how they fit into the overall narrative. You'd also get some cutscenes sprinkled in throughout, but honestly, a couple of hours into Neo, for example, I was completely lost as to what was going on. And Wolong, unfortunately, is no different. It's kind of a shame that we are now three games into this series and the story presentation has not gotten better one bit. I know, I know, Souls-like games and story are a little bit distant from each other, but still, if you're gonna have a story and voiced characters and named characters, it has to be presented better. If you wanna go on the route of not having an overall narrative, just make it cryptic like Dark Souls or most of the Souls series does, but this kind of weird halfway point I don't really enjoy. I think they want to tell an epic story with a lot of characters, they just don't know how to really pull that off. Another thing that has been an issue in my opinion since Neo 1 in this series is the absolute lack of restraint Team Ninja has with what they put into these games. 
This is the biggest overall fault category I have with these games, and it's a problem that shines in Wolong, honestly. I think this issue can be broken down into three mini complaints, sub-complaints, which amount to one, the overwhelming amount of systems. By this, I just want to give you an idea. In Wolong you have morale, traditional leveling, weapon upgrades, armor infusion, a Pokemon spirit mechanic, a buddy system, spells in five separate categories, which all interact and counter each other in various ways, consumable items, and martial arts, just to name a few. You are absolutely going to be overwhelmed by the sheer number of systems, stats, and numbers the game throws at you. And you have to learn this all with very, very poor tutorials. So you most likely will be lost and find the game way harder because you are not using one of the 1000 systems to your advantage. Because believe me, the game is extremely hard if you don't use every single thing to your advantage. I think some restraint would be much better. If Team Ninja could focus on three systems, but perfect them, like how combat is perfected, it would benefit the overall experience so much. I mean, let the Pokemon mechanic be Neo's thing. Wolong really, really didn't need a Pokemon mechanic when it already has the body system. The magic system does not need to be so convoluted. I mean, seriously, I dare you to figure out how the elements counter each other within Wolong because it's absolutely crazy. And the game gives you like one flash up tutorial on what they all do. This leads into the second issue, which is the equally overwhelming loot. Listen, this is probably the biggest thing that I have an issue with in these games, which can be classified as a personal problem. I know there are a ton of people out there who love the Diablo slash looter shooter style loot system and love that the Team Ninja games have these systems. However, I do not like it. To me, this system is completely unnecessary and does nothing but waste time. Honestly, I do not need 8 bronze spears in my inventory, all with slightly different stats and scaling, where I'm just gonna be sitting in a menu at the sort of main hub area and sell all of these for money. And then in the next mission, I'm just gonna get 3 more dropped by enemies. Unless you're absolutely dedicated and have hours upon hours to sink into looking at the stats, infusing equipment, uh, you know, looking at all the small scaling details and all the other things that affect equipment scaling and damage and all that, you're just gonna pick up everything, look at the blue number which indicates more damage and switch to that and sell everything else. But then this loot system becomes nothing more than, like I said, a huge time waster. If you're already just going to pick one or two weapon classes and focus on those, you shouldn't have to spend minutes sorting through all your junk. I seriously don't know why Team Ninja can't just focus on a core set of very strong weapons and have the systems that, for example, a normal Souls game has. I mean, none of the Souls games are lacking in variety of weapons, but you don't need to have like, I don't know, 15 great sides dropped to you in Dark Souls 1. I would much much prefer if the weapons could be acquired in missions or locations instead of again just uh, spilling out of every single enemy you kill. And finally, these two issues are married by my third biggest annoyance, which is the terrible and convoluted menu systems of this game. You will be spending a lot of time in the menus, and that's partly due to the fact that they really do a bad job at conveying info. There is just so much visual noise on screen with like alert markers, a ton of menus in different colors, random percentages, random stats and numbers that most of the time are going to mean absolutely nothing to you unless you really, really deep dive into them. This makes it even more difficult to make sense of all of the systems in front of you and also simply to manage your inventory properly. Seriously, I don't know why information can't just be simply presented to you plainly with an easy to read menu. All the Souls games have complex stats as well, yet making sense of everything is way easier in that series. These three problems I think are so tightly connected that simply fixing one would start a steamroll and cause the other to be naturally fixed as well. And it's difficult to talk a little bit about these issues because these systems outside of the menus 
are a signature of the Team Ninja Souls likes, so I've always felt like I'm shitting on aspects of the game that are fundamental and are aspects that some people might really enjoy, but to me they are really glaring and they do take away from my overall enjoyment of these games. And finally, a couple of other points to mention. First of all, just like with Neo 1 and Neo 2, enemy variety is also an issue in Wolong, in that there is absolutely no enemy variety and you're going to be fighting essentially the same grunts and the same couple of monsters uh, throughout the game. I don't know if it gets better late game, but for now it does seem like a problem. Luckily, the mission system has seen some huge improvements compared to Neo, and it's way easier to do side quests now. And finally, the last minor point, I think the difficulty scaling is honestly kind of strange in this game, in that the first boss is way, and I mean way harder than anything that comes after it for the next good few hours. I personally understand the idea of teaching players through punishment, but honestly this first boss might overdo this concept a little bit. Seriously, I always imagine myself as if I played one of these games for the first time and if that had happened, I'm not sure I would be able to beat the first boss. I mean, take another game for example like Dark Souls 3. Is Udex Gondir beatable by a noob? I would say yes. Is Margit the Fell, if we consider him the first boss, beatable by a noob? Yeah, I would say. He's difficult, but yeah, he's beatable. Is, I think he's called Zhang Lian, beatable? Technically, yes, but I truly think this boss would probably break 90% of new players' spirits and they would just simply quit, he's that difficult. So, overall to sum it up, what do I think about Wolong? Well, in my opinion, it's a good thing that Team Ninja nailed the combat system as much as they did because it is by far the strongest aspect of this game. It is honestly the core system and when the core system works and is enjoyable, it is gonna provide a pretty strong incentive for me to keep playing. And I do want to keep playing. I, as you guys probably remember, struggled to finish Neo. I got fairly far into Neo 2 but dropped it because it started to annoy me. Wolong does not give me that feeling. I want to keep going and like I said at the start, the game has been absorbing me pretty much and that is entirely due to the combat system being as enjoyable as it is. This is the first time in a long time that a game has managed to scratch the Sekiro itch that is not Sekiro. In fact, the combat is so good that whenever I'm not in combat is when the game starts to falter for me. The systems are overwhelming to an annoying degree and this is combined with bad menus, a dumb loot system and samey enemies. To me, the question is, can Team Ninja abandon these tropes? I would like to hope they can, because I believe a game with this combat system, with more of a Dark Souls or Bloodborne style story presentation and loot system, would truly be fantastic. And like I said, I completely get that there are a lot of players who play these games for the loot, but honestly, I think with Wolong, I've started to see people complain more and more about the loot system, so I do have hope that maybe the next game is going to abandon this. For now, I would say if you like Sekiro, if you like Ninja Gaiden, and you like Souls Likes, do definitely give this game a try. I still overall would recommend this game. Honestly, I would just say ignore the story. Focus on the loot system as little as you can and just enjoy the combat because it truly is the biggest thing to enjoy in this game. And like I said, you might tolerate the negatives of this game a little bit better than I can. As I mentioned, if these systems do not bother you, then certainly Wolong is the best out of the series. But even if you do agree with me on these issues, I would say that purely for the combat, this game is worth checking out. Again, thank you guys very much for watching this review. Like I said at the start, if you did enjoy this video, there are more videos and content coming. I'm starting a new stream series as well, probably tomorrow. Stay tuned for that. And yeah, peace out and take care. Goodbye.